The Jacksonville Bulls, two and three. The Memphis Showboats, one and four. Memphis has won the toss and will receive on this cool, cool night on the banks of the Mississippi, 43 degrees, but that 10 mile per hour wind makes it seem a lot colder than that. Humidity, 75%. Lindy Infante of the Jacksonville Bulls, he's brought his team back after serious injuries in two of the last three games. And on the other side of the field from him, back home, Pepper Rogers, Dressed for the weather, his team has lost its last three in a row. The kickoff will be Brian Franco out of Penn State, number three. And the deep man will be Derek Crawford, number nine, averaging better than 26 yards per return. We'll repeat again the first time either of these teams, and this is their sixth game of the year, has faced another expansion team. This is Alan Reed, the up man, backing inside the 10. Reed across the 20, and Reed gets out to the 23-yard line, where Memphis will put it in play. Walter Lewis, number 10, will be the quarterback. Alan Reed, who returned the ball 34, suffering from a severe cold, by the way, will be one running back. Cornelius Quarles, 40, the other. Your wide receivers, Derek Crawford, number 9, and Cormac Carney, number 83. Your tight end, the former giant Gary Shirk, number 87. Greg Roberts, he's new to the team. Paul McKinley, or rather Phil McKinley, the tackles. Ken Smith, Mike Horton, the guards. And Art Kuhn at center. And Lewis, back to throw on first down, and that is Kenny Reed out of the backfield. And pursued across there, and knocked down by Vaughn Johnson, number 33. And here are your defensive men for the Jacksonville Bulls. Val Brown, 70. Chris Wampler, 77. Joe Costello, 99, the down lineman. Your linebackers, Tom Dinkle, 52. Vaughn Johnson, 33, who just made the tackle. Andy Handel, 58. And Fernando Jackson, 53. Your corners, John Lopp, 35. Chester G, 26. And your safeties, Matt Courtney, 28. And Don Besselou, a hero a week ago, number 46. Second down and six from the 27. In motion is Crawford. Quick handoff, and that is Reed, and Reed picks up the first down out near the 38-yard line. Tackle made out there by Fernando Jackson, number 53, an outside linebacker. And an excellent block by Kent Smith, the offensive left guard. Art Kuhn had handled the nose tackle, Wampler, and as Ken Smith came around in a trap type of an action, opened a big hole for Reed. Eric Crawford comes out. Kim Dameron replaces him on first down. All at the 37 and a half yard line. That is Dameron in motion. Second man through. Reed gets a lot of running room and across the 40 yard line before Vaughn Johnson puts him down. Second tackle of the night for the great star out of North Carolina State. Good job by Johnson stepping up to fill in the inside linebackers. Exactly the same play they had ran the previous time, but they did not cut off Johnson, and he stepped in to make a nice tackle on Reed. Second down and seven. Good crowd tonight. They thought it might, might be bigger than this, but the cold weather obviously has held some people away. Second down, Walter Lewis. Back for yet another pass. Lewis and it'll be third down. For sure. Incomplete. Harry Shirk was the man, and Wampler was the man that helped break it up. Walter Lewis dropping back, throwing on first down the first uh, couple of series here that they have picked up first down. Shirk coming across the middle, setting inside, but a good job by Chris Wampler getting his hands in the air to deflect it. And Shirk still nearly made the reception, Don. Here it is, third down and seven. Walter Lewis, straight drop. Throws and off the hand of the intended receiver, Shirk again. For Gary Shirk, incomplete. Fourth down for the Showboats. Well, they had good pressure coming that time. Walter Lewis did not have as much time to throw the ball because they had the blitz coming from his left side, right where he was throwing to Fernando Jackson as Shirk was crossing the field. Partridge, back to punt. Rick Partridge, averaging better than 41 and a half yards per kick. Only kicked twice last week against Denver and had 47 yards. Hang this one up. 
That is Clark, and Clark is knocked down right at the 21-yard line. Clark is put down, knocked down by Vic Miner, our reserve defensive back. 12.59 to go. We're in the first quarter. There's no score. And out now comes the Jacksonville Bulls. Robbie Moff, who's number 15. We spoke of him, the quarterback. Larry Mason, 32. Woody McClendon, 21, the running backs. Gary Clark, who returned the punt, 80. Aubrey Matthews, 83, the wide receivers. Paul Bergman, the tight end. Bob Grouper, Nat Hudson, the tackles. Kenny Howell, George Collins, the guards. Dave Odie at center. <laughs> Woody McClendon, who's been having a great couple of weeks, bangs out six or seven yards across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Terry Love, the strong safety, came up to make the tackle. Along with number 56, Rod Schott, an outside linebacker. Give him eight yards on the play, second and two from the 29. And Lindy and Fonny feels that that's the strongest side of his offensive line, that left side with Kenny Howell at guard and Bob Gruber at tackle, opened a big hole. No score early in the first quarter. First possession for Jacksonville. And that is McClendon. Lost the football. And it belongs to Memphis. The teams are out, and now they say, no, it's the other way. The teams were on the field, and now they said, no, they made a mistake. Don Wilson's crew collects itself and corrects itself. And don't tell me that's Vaughn Johnson getting up with the ball, or is that number 90? Jimmy Walker, Nine. the nose tackle, number 93, slips to the side there, gets a hand in, causes him to lose the football, pop it in the air, and that's the strength of this Memphis ball club, has been their defense. From the side, closing in, you see the penetration. He never really put it away. Well, it's third down and one. Mafu's on third and short, has the time and has the man across the way. And that is Perry Kemp. And Kemp's got the first down at the 36-yard line. Big Miner made the stop Good. the show Good job by Mafu's coming back. You'll see him look to the left side. He was originally wanting to throw over that way. Now he'll come back to the right. Off balance, getting pressure, spots Kemp, and pops it in there for the first down. Reggie White getting pressure. Nothing fancy about it, just power. The power rush on Nat Hudson, the offensive tackle. Four and a half minutes have gone by, no score. First down and 10 at the 36. Mafu's going on first down. Puts it out here, has his man Mason out of the backfield. And Larry Mason's got another first down out near midfield. The boy is knocked down by Carlton Peoples, number 19 out of the University of Tennessee. Mark the ball right at midfield. Nose of the ball almost on the 50. Another change in their formation set where they had a double wing look, but it was really Larry Mason, a running back out there, and he was wide open, found the hole in the zone. Gary Clark goes wide to the left. Aubrey Matthews, who went to school at nearby Delta State, comes to the right. And that is McClendon. McClendon, a nice move to the outside and gets out to the 45-yard line of Memphis. Run out of bounds by Vic Miner, number 23. Along with Jimmy Walker, the nose tackle who peeled over there. Flag on the play. That is our first of the night, and Jacksonville is walking backwards. A little different play. It was very successful. We're going to get the call here uh -huh. in a moment, but... It's against Memphis, apparently, Don. It appears to be against the Memphis ball club, but a little misdirection play at that stage as McClendon took a counter step to the right. The guards and the offensive line were pulling to the left, held the linebackers in, got a chance to turn the corner, and then they tacked, uh, it looks like, another 15 yards on top of it for the penalty. This is Don Wilson, our referee, working tonight. We have a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 74 on the defense. It's first down. Foul is on Calvin Clark, number 74. Calvin Clark, is the tackle is being made over there by Vic Miner, and Clark coming in just a little bit late, wrapping him up. That puts the ball on a 31-yard line, first down. Mason comes as a slot back to the right. Bergman in motion. Mafu's pulls it out to McLendon on the weak side. 
And McLennan makes a good run down to about the 25-yard line. A pickup of five yards. It is second down and five as Jacksonville continues to drive. Remember, Matt Robinson, he is out, has been since the Tampa Bay game in the first half. Mafus came on to play New Orleans, got hurt, separated shoulder. Ken Hobart finished up that game, started the express game, didn't move the ball club. Mafus came back. Won the game, and here he is starting his second pro start tonight. And a good job unloading that football as Rod showed the linebacker was right in his face in the blitz. Clark wide left, Matthews slotted left. And now Mason comes right. Mafuz to McClendon. McClendon gets inside the 25, shy of the first down. It'll be third down and short yardage to go. Look there as though Billy Rowe came up and tripped up McClendon. And they'll mark the ball at the 23. He's got to get it to about the 21 for the first down. And George Collins, the right guard who was pulling out in front of that, an excellent block on the corner. Carlton Peoples, who came up to make the force in order to kick it out just enough for McClendon to turn up into the crack. Speaking of hurt quarterbacks, Doug Williams was severely injured in a game we did last week out in Arizona. Came back today in an overtime beat. Houston, 31-28 Oklahoma, the winner. And Williams had a great day. Third and short. Not going to McClendon, throwing the ball and getting it out of the backfield. And there goes McClendon, the man that they faked to. He comes out of the backfield, makes the catch, and goes to the four-yard line before Terry Love tracks him down. It's first and goal to go Jacksonville. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It was a magnificent job. Watch Mafu's coming back. Pressure coming from number 51, Bill Rowe. Mafu's moving out of there very alertly dumps the ball off to McClendon. McClendon had slipped through, was wide open. Nobody had covered him because the linebackers were on the blitz. This is what Memphis did not want to happen to get off to a slow start again this week. They were down 14 to nothing before they made a game of it a week ago with Denver. And there's McClendon. McClendon gets off one block and down near the two-yard line, and that is all. It is second and goal to go. They moved a third back in there, Marvin Lewis, number 24, to team with Larry Mason, 32, and McClendon, 21. And now some wholesale defensive changes made by Pepper Rogers, head coach of Memphis. Well, Lindy and Fonte had said that McClendon was playing extremely well for him, originally a third choice of the Chicago Bears. And he's led that bull ground attack the past three weeks, as well as being effective uh, catching the football. Well, McLennan must think this is fun. He backed up Walter Payton for all those years at Chicago, and now here is gaining yards by the ton. Mason into the end zone. Yes, touchdown. Mason Terry. Larry Mason caps off the drive that started at the 21 and helped along by an unnecessary roughness penalty and a fumble that they got back. Lead play out of the I formation, just coming over the left guard. Power lead there with McClendon out in front of it. And then Mason going high in the air, vaults over the top. Again, good forward surge by the offensive line to give him just enough daylight to get it in. Brian Franco, one for two only on extra points. Boots this one wide, and he can say, I'm now one for three. And it is six to nothing, not seven to nothing. Jacksonville has scored first. Six to nothing, 6.47 to go, first quarter. We're live from the Liberty Bowl on a chilly, chilly night along the banks of the Mississippi. Across the way, Cormac Carney takes this at the seven. Carney up the middle and out near the 30 yard line. Good job by the rookie out of UCLA. And here comes Walter Lewis and company back on the field. 78 yards, 10 plays. Mason from one yard out. It's kind of interesting, too, Jim, that while the Bulls are essentially a passing team, that was their 10th rushing touchdown for the season, and they have thrown for seven. So it's a little bit contrary to what you might think. And I keep Don waiting for Walter Lewis to run more than he has tonight. That was the indication we got he was going to do, but he's been throwing. Crawford and Lewis hands the ball off. And that is Alan Reed again. Cornelius Quarles has not yet touched the football. You know, one of the things that coaches will do 
in this case where Walter Lewis came out uh, pretty much throwing the football a little bit unexpected but as the game progresses they normally settle into their regular pattern and and go back to that running game or passing if that's their strength second down and six at the 34 <laughs> Lewis again, this time calls, who said he didn't have his hands on the football. He's got it this time and has the first down. Vaughn Johnson and Andy Handel, teammates at North Carolina State, numbers 33 and 58. The inside linebackers ran him down, but not until Quarles picks up the first down and marked it to 42. There was some question whether Quarles would play tonight. It was kind of a wait and see type of thing. He's been bothered with a hip pointer, but he certainly didn't look like it there. He got some good blocking out in front of it. The guard was pulling. Picked off Chester Gee, the corner, gave him that little alley to turn it up, and he put a little bit of smoke on it. Well, Kim Dameron has gone in, Don, but they brought out a back. That's right. So they've got three wide receivers in there. <laughs> on first down, Lewis with three wide receivers gets the ball out across the way to Gary Shirk, and Shirk picks up seven yards out to the 49-yard line before Tom Dinkle. The left side linebacker ran him out of bounds. Gary Shirk, the tight end, number 87, just releasing, goes into the linebacker, Tom Dinkle, and then bounces off him. The old pro, he gives it a little bit of a shove and a good adjustment by Walter Lewis to find him back there. And that's one thing Pepper Rogers said, that Walter Lewis wasn't finding the right people at times. He found Shirk then. Second down and four. Six to nothing, Jacksonville. Memphis has the football. <laughs> Crawford in motion. Reed up in the backfield. Down goes Reed. There's Tom Dinkle again. Number 52. Smart man played six years with the Bengals. Many of those years on special teams. But just last year, he started most of the games as an outside linebacker for Cincinnati. And the thing Tom Dinkle did that was so successful right there, which most good linebackers will do, he recognized the play coming his way. He got across that line of scrimmage, got penetration, got the play before it was started. Third down and seven, move the ball back inside the 45-yard line. Again, three wide receivers in there for the showboats. <laughs> Lewis, now he's going to run and going to get the first down easily. Walter Lewis slides down inside the 40-yard line. First down. <laughs> Well, Jim, you know, Pepper Rogers talked about Walter Lewis and his intelligence and how smart he is. Watch him drop back here. That'll open up right down the middle behind number 50, Art Coon. Good move by Walter Lewis to take it up the center. And to show you his intelligence, we talked about quarterbacks. He knew when to get to the ground after he got all the yardage he could get. That's something he's learned since coming to the pros. Absolutely. From a 39-yard line. <laughs> Lewis play action pass throws it out here oh right in and out of the hands of little Alan Reed coming out of the backfield Alan Reed is the man they call a postage stamp back in that Marcus Dupree you know about him Mike Rozier you know about him and all the money they got Herschel Walker well Pepper Rogers said I mailed a letter to Alan Reed cost me 20 cents and I got a starting running back. And he said, what a surprise he's been. And they had set that play up by running that trap, pulling the guard, where Reed goes at the linebacker. That time he slipped by him, was wide open. Late in the first quarter, 6-0. Jacksonville, 2.41 to go. Second down and 10. And there goes Reed again. And Reed picks up yardage down to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and short. Don Besselou came up to make the stop. He of two interceptions in the fourth quarter last week against Los Angeles to win that ball game. There is Alan Reed. He has carried the ball more than anybody else. He went to Minnesota. He also went to TCU. He also played football in junior college. So he had quite a checkered career as an undergraduate and then was picked up for the price of a postage stamp. And you see those statistics at 5'8", 185. That means that he is really low built. You can see his balance in that last run. Third down, a yard to go from a 30-yard line. Straight ahead goes Quarles, and second effort may have done it for him. Let's see where they mark the ball. He's either going to just have it or just miss it. Crawford is coming back in, and the wide receivers come in and out bringing the plays. 
And when there are three wide receivers in there, the third wide receiver many times lines up as another back. It looks like he got split backs, but they really have three wide receivers. Pepper Rogers is making sure they call for measurement. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel he's got enough, but Jim, here they are down six to nothing. They're at the 29 yard line. In the event, before we get this measurement, you, would you go for it on fourth down or would you uh, go for the field goal? I think Pepper would go for it. I do too. And I definitely would. He doesn't have to make that decision. He's got it. Jacksonville up by six. Franco missed the extra point. Memphis trying to get on the board themselves. Liberty Bowl. Live Saturday night football on ESPN. First down. Waterloo still has the ball. Fires it. And out of bounds intended for number 83, Cormac Carney. And back there was Chester G to make the good play. And it was a good play by Chester G back there. A little play action fake as we see Lewis setting up the throw. Waited just a little bit too long for Carney to get to the wide side. But you see G coming in, getting a hand up. The ball's thrown slightly high. And G, a guy who had lost his job when he had been a starter initially, got a chance to get back in there due to injury. Responded with an interception a week ago. Had a couple, uh, had one against LA and has played very well. Second down and 10 from inside the 29. Lewis on the handoff. Quarles finds an opening and gets inside the 25. Down to about the 23 where it'll be third down and four to go. Andy Hendel came up to make the stop. The Quarles on the draw play at 220 pounds, just six feet tall. He's got, he's got a good leverage motion in there as evidenced in this drive where he picked up that crucial short yardage situation just on second effort and here he shows why he's tough to bring down third down and about three not five about three <laughs> ball for the man in motion Lewis hands to Reed Reed looking for running room and we're going to have a decision again to go for the three which I would assume they might do with Alan Duncan or to go for the first down. The ball is at the 20. They've got to get it inside the 19, almost to the 18 for the first down. Nothing from the sidelines, but here comes Alan Duncan. They'll go for the three. Remember, it is only six to nothing, a missed extra point. I don't think that would have had anything to do with Pepper's decision anyway. What a difference in these two teams. Memphis had their ball game won against Denver last week only to lose. Jacksonville had their game lost to Los Angeles last week only to win. This will be 37 yard field goal attempt by Alan Duncan. And it is good. From 37 yards out, the Boers turn into cheers as Memphis is on the board. Four seconds to go. First quarter, 6 3, Jacksonville. Duncan kicks it off along the ground, squibbing along, could go out of bounds, which means he's going to have to kick it again, but no time showing now <laughs> on the scoreboard clock. Well, I think if they uh, change the quarter here, Jim, it would be the first time in some 35 years of football that I've ever seen a quarter end as the ball is kicked and then it'd go out of bounds like that and then have to kick it again to start the second quarter. <laughs> we have a kickoff out of bounds. Five yard penalty. It's also the end of the first quarter. Bang. That's the end of the first quarter. Well, what a quarter it was. Jacksonville scored first on a long drive then the field goal by Memphis. Live from Memphis, Tennessee, Jim Simpson with Don Heinrich. We begin the second quarter, and frankly, we're scratching our heads a little bit, but we're going to check with some officials to find out how you can end a quarter on a penalty, which, depending on the win, could benefit the team that was penalized. But we'll take a look at that. That is Clark, or rather Matthews, with the ball on the far side and run out of bounds as he crosses the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Run out of bounds by Randy McHugh and Carlton Peoples. As Duncan comes off the field, we'll take another break for just a moment. 6-3, Jacksonville. Jacksonville has the ball at the 33-yard line. 
Bob Foos brings them out as we're just early in the second quarter. Look at this three wide receiver. Now Mason goes back into the backfield. And Larry Mason carrying the ball not for much. Actually, Larry did a good job as he crossed the 35-yard line. I would have given him about two. He's going to wind up with about five, maybe six. Good change of direction on his part as he wanted to come off the right guard. George Collins broke back behind it. First quarter statistics. Memphis controlling it on the ground as expected. Passing, it's been uh, Jacksonville. Second down on a long three from the 39-yard line. First fan through, and that is McLennan. And McLennan comes out close to the first down. Jimmy Walker hanging on for dear life. Jimmy Walker made see Reggie White getting up. And that's the first down for Jacksonville. Dave Odie, the center, number 97. Gets a little hook on Jimmy Walker there as they're trying to come off that left side, but a pretty good surge by the two offensive guards to knock him back and pick up the first down. From the 44. Bonte, as usual, showing a lot of different sets tonight. Mafu is back to throw. Across the way is Paul Bergman, his tight end. And Bergman is near the first down before Carlton Peoples, number 19, takes him out of bounds. Bergman was a third-round draft choice out of UCLA. And if you take a look down the Jacksonville roster, you will see a lot of players with UCLA under their names, where Pepper Rogers had some great years. As a matter of fact, he was 9-2 uh, and two in his last year. And now Jacksonville also shows that it's got some UCLA folks, too. And Robbie Mafus read that defense perfectly as he was being blitzed by Lamont Jeffers to his side, dumped it off quickly to Bergman. That is Mason setting up wide to the right. First down. Mafus. Little quick underhanded pitch to McLennan. McLennan's got the first down inside the 35 and near the 30-yard line with Randy McHugh leading the tacklers along with Brian Howard, number 24. A little flip underhanded pass. Well, I want to tell you, that's, I'm sure, a setup for Reggie White, defensive end 92, up the left of your screen. Just going by there, the old shovel pass, the underneath move, and it takes some guts to call it. But it opened up absolutely perfect. It slows up the rush of those defensive linemen. Six to three, Jacksonville. They're on the move. They've got the ball. First down at the 30-yard line of Memphis. And now coming around is Aubrey Matthews, and the little speedster gets down inside the 25-yard line. Matthews run out of bounds across away by Lamont Jeffers. And it's second down and four from the 24. Don, you are an ex-quarterback in college and in the pros. And Fonte is showing us all kinds of sets tonight. Absolutely. And not only that, he's giving us misdirection plays. He's had the shovel pass a play before. And then Audrey Matthews, the wide receiver, coming around on a reverse. So he's getting that defense off balance. Second down four. Mafuz puts it out here and hanging. Nope, he doesn't do it. Mason drops the ball as a big hit is put on him by Steve Hammond. Well, they set it up. The right guard, George Collins, pulling right there across, number 66. The fake to the back. And as Mafuz drops back, he hits Mason coming out of the backfield. The ball that should have been caught, he didn't put it away. And good effort by the defensive man to knock him loose from the football but it was a catchable one from the 24 spoken like a true quarterback <laughs> well you know the guy that feels the worst about it is the guy that drops the ball so you don't have to say anything on third and four Mafus wants some time to talk to Infante big play coming up in a 6-3 ball game whole night in Memphis but a good ball game close with Mafus and Infante due for decision Third down from the 24-yard line. And Mafuz went over, had a quick word with Infante, came back on the field, back into the huddle, 
And all of a sudden, Infante came out on the field again saying, hey, wait a minute. And he had to run back to find out what it is they're going to do. Well, he they're... says that Mapu's a very laid back kind of a guy. <laughs> doesn't get real excited. He wanted to make sure he had the right one call for this trip. Third and four from the 24. In trouble, gets the ball, and it is caught down the way by Perry Kemp. And Carlton Peoples puts him down inside the 10-yard line. Mafu's running for his life, found Perry Kemp. Well, up to this stage, Mafu's has managed to escape the rush as it comes in from the right side there. The safety blitz, Vic Miner was coming, and then... The end was getting after him, but as he's done about four times so far here in the first half, he managed to avoid him and find a guy open, dumped it off to the rookie Perry Kemp. First and goal to go. Clark to the right, Matthews to the left. Ball at the eight-yard line. Big third down play. First man through, McLennan inside the five-yard line. Bill Rowe hanging on to him. You can also see Rod Schote. Second down. Mafu's on the handoff, just off the left side. Not a whole lot there. Good defensive play. Good, good play Second by Rose. Goal. Step up and hit the gap. Six to three, Jacksonville, and they're well. That's an understatement to say they're threatening again. Second down from the four. <laughs> Mafu's to McLennan on a delay. Touchdown! McLennan scores. scores his third touchdown rushing of the year and the second tonight for Jacksonville rushing the football. And don't underestimate that third down play to Kemp. And the draw action right there to Willie McClendon. You see him step to the right. 66 is George Collins out in front. Gets a nice block on Rowe. And a big hole opens up to that right side. White coming upfield. The tackle gets him turned outside. Nate Hudson, 63. And, of course, McClendon just heading into that six-point territory. And since they missed their first conversion, they will go for two here. <laughs> Mafus is going to throw for it. And out there all by himself is Larry Mason for the two-pointer. And it is 14 to 3. And Mafus really took a lick as he threw that ball, Jim. 10.21 to go. Jacksonville field. looking good. Memphis starting it's slowly as it did last week. Memphis cut the Jacksonville lead to 14-10 when quarterback Walter Lewis hit Derek Crawford on an acrobatic five-yard pass in the end zone midway through the second quarter. The Bulls answered back when place kicker Brian Franco split the uprights on an 18-yard field goal in the final seconds of the half. We pick up the action with 4 minutes 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and Jacksonville has the ball first down and 10 on their own 38-yard line. Quarterback Robbie Mafoose is under center looking to spark the offense and increase the Bulls' 17-10 lead over the showboats right here on ESPN Classic. First and ten. Mafu splits on. He gets another wrap as he gets the ball away, and it is caught again. Lost. Kemp had the ball. Lost the ball. And let's see. Well, that is Clark. And Mafu is getting up, holding that left arm a little bit with that slight shoulder separation as he drops back. Coming from the left side of your screen, you'll see the pressure. There's the lick he takes. Pow! The ball up high, good adjustment on the catch. He's trying to put it away, but an excellent job by the defensive back to strip him loose of it. Here's Rod Schote, linebacker to that side. He's coming in clean, and oh, bang. On Ooh. that shoulder, just oh. the one that was separated. Yep. Second down and 10 from a 37. <laughs> Apu splits it on again. The ball is thrown high, intended for Kemp across the way, and Mafus is down again. Brian Howard, who's been deviling him all night, led the blitz that came from both sides. Well, 
You know, we talked about the gambling defense when you bring a lot of people. Mafu's coming back. Everybody after him. From the right side, here comes All Brian Howard. Right Bang! He Her gives him a shot go. right in the ribs as he lets it go. And one thing you have to be to play offense for the Bulls is very durable as a quarterback because you're going to take some licks. Walter Lewis waiting to come back in to get his offense going if he can. Maybe shortly. It's third down and ten. Mafu's back again. The flip out there to Mason, and Mason is out of bounds. And they say he did not go out of bounds until, well, they're going to mark it short of the first down. At the 43-yard line, they'll have to kick it away. Carlton Peoples ran him out of bounds. Now, remember Jeff Brockhaus last time in there. He just tossed that ball out and booted a very short, bad kick in his first punt as a Jacksonville Bull. Watch the drop on the punt this time and see if Brockhaus, the rookie out of Missouri, can do better. Back deep is Kim Dameron standing in his own 21. It was fourth down. The ball belongs to Memphis. His name's Rockhouse. Makes no difference. What happened there as far as recovering the ball is concerned because once he dropped it, that's it. Unless he kicked it away. Rockhouse going high in the air after he'd gotten that bad... Uh, bad drop earlier for a bad kick People this time recovery. trying to act like a first baseman the out there had absolutely no opportunity the only thing he could do is try and fall on the ball well I tell you what the two times that Jeff has been in there tonight one bad kick and that time a bad snap he's got to be a little bit jumpy back there wondering what's going on that get a little game is nothing to get the ball at the 24 first down Walter Lewis is really in a good situation here down 17 to 10 Hands off to Quarles, and that was almost a missed handoff there. Quarles gets down to about the 23-yard line before Tom Dinkle stacks him up. Lindy Anfade has got reason to be upset. Brockhouse, as we said, is the third legitimate putter that they've had this year, and this is only the sixth game, and Robbie Mafu's even punted one time, so he's the fourth man to punt. It's Charlie Davis, his assistant head coach there, alongside of him, and the special team coach went to the far end of the bench. Second down and nine to go, 23-yard line. Here's Quarles, breaks one tackle, breaks back inside. First down inside the 15. They say he fumbled, Jacksonville does, but the officials are not saying it. And that will be a first down. Good job of running by Quarles because Joe Costello as you'll see the handoff, 99 will come into view from the right side. Doesn't make the tackle there. He gets a piece of him. That's number 99, Costello, and Quarles, with good balance, manages to break the tackle and pick up some very, very big yardage for this Memphis football team. 2-10 to go, third quarter, 17-10 Jacksonville. First down, 13-yard line, Memphis. Quarles again. Breaks another tackle or two and gets down to the 10. It'll be second down and seven to go as Tom Dinkle is in on yet another tackle along with Brian Douglas and those tackle number 78. Well, that's something you won't see too often is the repeating of the same play and they ran exactly the play they had run previously, a sweep to that left side where they had had nice yardage on that earlier play. This time they only get a couple. Yards come tougher down in this area. Carney goes wide to the left. Dameron comes wide to the right. <laughs> Lewis looking. Lewis better get rid of it. Better get rid of it even if he throws it out of the end zone. Finds a man across the way. Touchdown. It's Pearls. Lewis waited longer than I thought he should, but he was the man that knew what he was doing and finds Quarles. And the key was that he slipped that first block or the first tackler. As you see, the play action fake. Now, they aren't even involved in the pass at this point. So he's coming back, rolling to the right. 70 is Val Brown that he managed to evade right there. Then he looks all the way back to that left side. 
nobody was over there. The defense had pursued the other way. They had left their responsibility. Great job. And now Duncan will try to add the extra point and tie the game, and he does. It is 17 all with 1.12 to go. Walter Lewis has thrown his sixth touchdown pass of the year, and Quarles has scored his first touchdown of the year. Well, this is just really an outstanding job by Walter Lewis. You see him coming out here. He's trying to get Gary Shirk, who adjusted 87 right there, but all the way back across field, absolutely no one in the area. They were waving their hands frantically over there. Quarles, he said, give me the football. I got the easiest six I ever had in my life. And as you called it, his first touchdown of the season. 1-12 to go, Duncan to kick it off. Lewis is back on the phone, but Jacksonville is back on the field, tied at 17. They'll get the ball back. Duncan to kick off, Clark and Matthews the deep man. 1-12 to go, third quarter, we have a tie game at 17. Clark at the 11. And across the 30-yard line. Mark received the kick. And now Mahfuz comes back, so remember, without Willie McClendon. McClendon. We keep pointing that out, but that's a big part of their offense the tonight. He scored a touchdown, was First leading down. the cub in receiving and rushing the ball when he went out. But he is out. Ball is on the 31. And Mahfuz has taken his share of shots tonight. Boy, has he ever. And he stands in there. Not a big man. He is tall, 6'2", but weighs less than 200. Bob Boos back for more. Looking, being pursued. Gets the ball up for grabs and across the way. It is no good. That was intended out there for Wyatt Henderson, and Reggie White was the man pursuing Mafuz. There's a scoring drive, 24 yards after five plays. After the bad snap, remember, set that up and Quarles had the 10-yard touchdown pass. Well, I don't know that you'd completely interpret that as a turnover on that bad snap, Jim, but that's the second time that Memphis has got the ball in decent field position, and they certainly capitalized on it. Clark comes wide left. Mahfuz on second down 10. Oh, they've done it again. Mason is isolated out there by himself. That gambling defense, Don, works so often, and when it does not, it is a big gainer for the Bulls. Yes, indeed. And that's one thing that coaches are a little reluctant to go to the gambling-type defense because they know they become vulnerable to big plays. They may be successful as Mahfuz dropping out of there. Mason, who is all alone, once again, no one covering him, Good adjustment by Mafu's as number 19, Carlton Peoples, knocks Mason out of bounds, but Mafu's reading it absolutely perfect. Vic Miner limps off the field. Randy McHugh replaces him in the secondary for Memphis. First down, the 47-yard line of Memphis. Jacksonville's got the ball. First man through is Mason not going anywhere. Big play by Jimmy Walker, the nose tackle, number 93. His second big play in the last five minutes of play. And they may not get another play away before this third quarter runs out. It is 17 all. Mafuz knows that he need not get another play away. So it's second down and about 11 to go from the 48. He lets time run out in the third quarter. Well, we've got 15 minutes to decide this. It's a good one. Jacksonville and Memphis meeting for the first time ever and tied at 17. We are live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Jim Simpson with Don Heinrich. We begin the fourth quarter of a 17-all ball game between Memphis and Jacksonville. Jacksonville with the ball, second down 11 from the 48 of Memphis. Memphis has six defensive backs expecting a throw from Mafu. Showing blitz. They are on their way. He gets the ball away, and there goes Kemp. Boy, that's what can happen to you when a blitz is on. Kemp is inside. Well, they stop it at the 10-yard line. Everybody was coming, and Perry Kemp was free. And that is a 38-yard pickup. And Perry Kemp, the rookie, 
He uses the third wide receiver. Mafu's reading it perfectly. Perry Kemp is going to stumble and fall down at the end. It's a foot race to the end zone. Makes a little move right here on number 27. That's Dorn Major. And you see him stumble. He was unhappy with himself because he had six points. And uh, they made the, uh, the hash mark just a little bit too tall for him there in the 10-yard line. His right toe up. on it. Got That's caught. what he did. Yes, indeed. Got caught the grass. From the 11. 17 all and Jacksonville looking to untie things early in the fourth quarter. Mafu's with the fake, puts the ball high in the air and no. No good. Carlton Peoples back there. Whiting was the intended receiver. Peoples was there at its second down. Mafu's on a naked bootleg coming out by himself. He's going to get pressure right there. Really, he just kind of threw the ball out of bounds in the general direction. He wasn't actually trying to get the ball to anybody as Doran Major was right there uh, to help make the play. Carlton Peoples, number 19 on defense. Second down. Mafuz again looking across the middle for Bergman. Touchdown! 11-yard touchdown pass to Bergman. Mafu's pass to Bergman was complete for a touchdown. What a great throw by Mafu's coming back. He really got rid of that thing in a hurry, and he put it through a small crack to Bergman, the tight end, who was their second-leading receiver with 16 catches. Had not got many tonight. He just released out of the corner of your picture there on the right side. There's the quick release. Hammers it into the middle, and number 51 who gets beat on that is Bill Rowe. So... Big play by Robbie Mafus again this evening. Bergman catches a second touchdown pass of the year. Brian Franco on to make it 24 to 17 if he can. And he does. Franco's kick was good. Couple of big plays there. The play to Kemp to get down to the 11. And then the pass to Bergman for the touchdown. Flag down on the play, but the teams are leaving the field Don Wilson will tell us probably that Jack uh, Memphis was offside but now he's trying to find out himself we have a personal foul uh -huh. unnecessary roughness number 66 on the defense personal foul number 74 on the kickers after the play the point is good penalties are offset, offset each other and so it's still 1353 to go well, Carlton Gunn was the initial guilty man, 305 pounder. I don't know that you want to fool with him. Mafu's coming back. He has a good lane to throw the ball. Clark 74 bearing down on him, but you can see he puts it just out of reach of the defensive personnel over there. Bill Rowe and number 22, Randy McHugh. Pepper Rogers not smiling now, and Fonte a little bit more enthusiastic. His team leads by seven. Franco to kick it off, 13.53 to go. Walter Lewis and group will have to get it uncranked again, and why not? That's the kind of ball game it's been tonight. Crawford trying to track it down, but it's taken by one of the up men. Now a handoff to Allen Reed, and Reed goes down on a fine tackle by Whiting, who is also playing on the special teams. Allen Reed on the reverse. They'll put the ball Reed. down at the 24-yard line. And it is first and ten. Well, Indian Fonny's thrown a lot of tricks at him with shovel passes and reverses, different combinations, and Pepper Rogers, who has a few tricks in his bag, came with the reverse on the kickoff, but not particularly effective. Two expansion ball clubs, both with losing records, but a highly entertaining game tonight. Walter Lewis. Tur Turdell Middleton, who was in there for the first time. He's the packer we told you about who made the Pro Bowl out of Memphis State. And he gets to carry the ball for the first time. And Wampler and Johnson put him down. A gain of a yard, second down to nine. And he was greeted uh, in a fashion that wasn't too reminiscent of some of his 1,000-yard uh, performances when he first came into professional football. Good, good job by the defensive unit of the Jacksonville Bulls. Second down, and let's call it nine to go. In this final quarter, Memphis has to move against a stiff wind. Lewis fires.
Myers, and wow, what a shot taken by Carney as the ball is brought down by Courtney. Check that. That is not Courtney. That is Chester G. Rose and in Bobby's team, the intended receiver is Turn. still on the field. What a shot as the ball was overthrown to G. Holtz, 33-yard line. Well, as Lewis dropping back, goes to the quick post move, coming inside. Pow! He takes the shot right there, the ball going high All over right, the top, 20. right into G's hands, his I'm third interception. Here. And one of the things, you see him going to the sideline, a lot of, a lot of clubs will say when you get an interception, you yell fire, and that means he's going to move to the near sideline. Chester G with his third interception of the year. Three times this year, Jacksonville has picked off at least three interceptions in a ball game. And tonight, they already have two. And they also have outstanding field position just inside the 33-yard line. First and 10 to go. Second turnover by Memphis. Jacksonville has turned the ball over once. Remember, Willie McClendon taken to the dressing room with the knee. That's all we know. That was before the half ended, the first half. Mafu's getting it out toward Whiting, but it has bounced down. And I think that is Willis Yates that knocked the ball down. Maybe it was Putt Show, or rather Rod Schoet. Yeah, Rod Schoet. It was Schoet. Rod Schoet was on the blitz coming that way, and he just jumped up in the face of Mafu's to knock it away. Here he comes. 56, left corner. Goes high. Right hand. Swat. Kill shot. Second down and 10 from inside the 33. 24-17 Jacksonville. Golden opportunity here. They put Clark out wide to the left. And they've got Aubrey Matthews to the right. Fake to Whiting. Mafus hangs on to the football. Stands, drills toward the end zone to Bergman. Tight end. Touchdown. His second in a row. Bergman opens up the game with a second straight reception. And now they are saying after the official had the hands up in the end zone, someone else has made a different call. Jim, now they'll have a discussion. We're a long way away from it. It's in a far corner. But it almost looked like Bergman had not quite put the ball away as he was going out of the end zone line. We're getting the official complaint. The ball is being bobbled. Well, someone came over and corrected that official right on the end line. Watch, you will see the you'll see the hands go up. Right well, I don't know if you will hear. But you the, see he's juggling it down low a little bit. Right. I thought that he really didn't have it in control as he went out of the end zone with it. Just a, a tad late or should have been put away a, a hair sooner. Well, bring it back. And more importantly, caught a third down. You saw the hands go up. The, the official was overruled. Across the tenant for Bergman, it is fourth down. And how quickly times can change. Steve Hammond was there to help break it up. A play called a touchdown, later ruled no touchdown, and it was an accurate call by the officials. And now suddenly it is fourth down, and on comes Brian Franco, and Memphis is given new life in a big hurry. Really? They could have been down by two touchdowns, and the Bulls, who are averaging 25 points a game, now leading 24-17, go from a potential two-touchdown lead to a shot at a field goal. A 49-yard field goal, but remember, the wind is behind Brian Franco. So that will help. From 49 yards out, the kick is not going to make it there. And Memphis is going to take over. As is so often said, they have dodged the bullet and dodged it by the juggling of Bourbon going out of the end zone. 12.09 left. The Bulls lead by seven. Jordell Middleton will start on this series of plays also with Cornelius Quarles. Reed is not in there. And here's a hand off to Crawford, and he's not going to get anywhere at all. Joe Costello, number 99, playing that right defensive end spot, knocked him down. He stumbled forward to the line of scrimmage. It is second down and 10. That's another adjustment that uh, Pepper Rogers had made. Derek Crawford had been the split end. He moved him to the flanker position so they could get him more in motion, that time trying to bring him back, but unsuccessfully on the reverse move. On the 33, second down. Ten yards to go. 
Reed carrying the football. He's out across the 35. It'll be third down and six to go. Vaughn Johnson, Chris Wampler made the tackle. Listening to the call of Walter Lewis, I'm reminded what Pepper Rogers told us down in Birmingham, Alabama, Don. He said, Walter Lewis is so intelligent, it can't stand it. And I said, why? He said, he's so intelligent, he doesn't laugh at my jokes. <laughs> That's hard to do, I'll tell you, because <laughs> Pepper is an extremely entertaining person. 37-yard line, third down and six to go to keep this drive alive. <laughs> Lewis dropping straight back, now rolling out. Now standing there. Oh, he can make a first down by going this way, but he's going to stop, get it over here, and catching the ball is Cormac Carney. Carney inside the 35-yard line as Lewis on the run threw it across the field and completed it on third down and six. Well, Pepper feels he needs to get big, big plays out of Lewis. That's a pre-planned scramble. He drops straight back. Then you see him roll out to the right side. He spots Carney down there after waiting for a half an hour. It looks like he's going to run to the right. Could have ate a sandwich back there, but there is a big play as he throws to Carney. Coming across the defensive back, Don Besselu goes bang. He drilled him. Carney with his first catch of the night. <laughs> From the 33-yard line, here comes Lewis this way. Now stopping and throwing underneath. And has his man Shirk, and Shirk is brought down by Vesely. Inside the 20-yard line, first down Memphis. They trail by seven, nine and a half to go. And that's where Walter Lewis is the most effective when he's on the move, when he gets outside. Almost throws better on the run than he does from the pocket. And that time, ever so dangerous, came out there Shirk. The tight end coming from right to left got so wide open, Walter spotted him, and he can make big plays as he's done here in this drive. They better call time or they're going to lose five yards here. I don't think they'll get the play away before the clock runs out. I think that's going to be it. The clock has run out, but nobody's going to whistle unless there's a different clock on the field. Reed carries the ball. The clock at the end zone had run out. But obviously the officials are keeping a different clock and the clock operator was not correct because they let him go on and run that play off. And Wampler made the tackle of Reed and it's second down. Walter Lewis looking to the sideline. He wants to get those plays in a little quicker when it's getting close to that 30 second clock. He said, please get them to me in a hurry. They're too far into the field. What must have happened was they started that clock too soon. After the first down, it's going to run out again, according to the clock up there, and nothing is called as it crosses out there to Quarles, and that is number 52, Tom Dinkle, after him. But again, the clock, I don't know what's the matter with the clock, but the clock keeps running out before Memphis puts the ball in play, and there's no whistle. It's third down. Well, Walter Lewis is trying to set that screen up to the right side. Had to let it go a little bit too quick before he had a chance to get it going. Quarles could not get anybody out in front of him. He didn't wait for the blocking. He knows he's getting close to pay dirt. He said, I'm going to take what I can get. I'll worry about the blocking later. There's the clock, and we watched it start just when the official signaled it. And here they come. Five, four. Three and stepping across Lewis with one second to go. This time calls timeout. Eight twelve to go. Timeout on the field. And the showboats are trying to come up with a big third down play. They trail the Bulls by seven. It's 24 to 17, Jacksonville. Big play time. Third and long. Scoring territory. Crawford, who caught a touchdown pass earlier, comes wide to the right. Carney to the left. Crawford starts in motion. Lewis back. Lewis throws underneath and has his man Crawford. Crawford is down to about the one-yard line. And that's enough for first and goal to go. Stopped by Besselu. Big third down play for the showboats. Crawford coming in motion, number nine, down the line of scrimmage. One of the defensive backs will take a shot at him here, try to knock him off. That's a linebacker, number 56. 
Doug West, who misses him, and Crawford makes the big play, gets it in deep, and the showboats are threatening. Couple of tight ends as Frank Smith joins Gary Shirk. Ball is inside the two. First down, Quarles battling, still on his feet. Quarles may not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Take your choice. Handle is the man you can see. Also, there was Chester G. But Quarles was knocked back and lost some yardage back to outside the three. Second down. Coming right into the living room. Quarles off that side. Bang! He takes a vicious hit right there, but good balance on his part to come back. However, when he tries to slide to the outside, Jackson 53 forced him back in. Let's see if Lewis might carry the ball here. <laughs> Gonna put it up for grabs and no good. No good. Allen Reed on the ground looking up. Back there with him, linebacker Andy Hendel. It's third down. You have to wonder going to the left side, play action fake. And now as Walter Lewis rolls out, he tries to get rid of it in a hurry. He knows he's going to run out of the end of the end zone at that stage. And Alan Reed trying to go high in the air. You see him try and keep his feet in, but unfortunately ran out of room. All right, quarterback. Remember the option play that Walter Lewis pulled on a third and short situation back in the first half? Be a good call right here. Either that or the last play they ran. I'd turn it over and go to the right. Barney and Crawford are both to the right. Third down. Here comes Lewis running the option play. Lewis. Touchdown. Good call, coach. <laughs> Excellent thought. Well, second time tonight they went with the option, and this time. It worked the big one, and down near that goal line, that absolutely the toughest play in football to cover is an option run by a quarterback with a guy like Walter Lewis. Very effective. Here comes Walter down to the left, his left. He has no intention of pitching it. He's just looking for any kind of a little crack, a missed tackle by 99, Joe Costello, and then Walter sees that crack and gets in. Alan Duncan to attempt to tie the ball game with 6.31 to go. The kick is good. We've got a tie game. It is 24 all. Walter Lewis breaking the tackle of Costello and taking it in. Well, this is something Walter Lewis probably does as well as anybody in football. See that quickness? A missed tackle, though, over the top by Joe Costello, the defensive end, number 99, gave Walter Lewis just enough daylight to surge to the goal line. The Liberty Bowl is excited on his chilly night. They've got a hot ball game and a tie game at that. Duncan to kick it off. Clark and Matthews are deep. It is 24 all with six and a half minutes to go. Memphis going against the win. Jacksonville without McClendon who was hurt going with the win. A short kick and taken by the up man there. And that is Aubrey Matthews, and Matthews gets the ball out to about the 35-yard line. And now Robbie Mafus will try to move the ball down because, remember, his kicker, Brian Franco, who missed that 49 yards moments ago, will have the wind at his back should it come down to a field goal situation. Well, Mafus having uh, just a little over 65 yards to go, did get relatively good field position with that short kick. Clark, wide to the left. Matthews to the right. Whiting and Mason the setbacks. Mafuz to Whiting knocked away by Rod Schoet. Second time in this half he has knocked a ball away that Mafuz has tried to get out to his left. <laughs> and Pepper loves it on the sideline. He said, oh, oh yeah Rod. Just like a spike in basketball. Pow down the shoot. Pepper says that Schott is, as we said, his coach and leader on the field. He's demonstrated it thus far in this second half. From the 34, second and 10, six minutes to go. Three wide receivers in there now. Mafuz gets the ball out here, no good. 
It was intended for number 89, Alden Alexis, who makes his first play of the night. Carlton Peoples, a defender, and now Mafus has a third down and 10. Well, the Bulls had averaged 39% in third down situations coming into this football game. When he went to Alton Alexis, he really made kind of a bad choice because he had three people over there covering him. Alexis had missed a couple games with a bruised back, and coming in uh, cold like this might be a little stiff. Third down and 10 from a 34. Memphis not blitzing. Ball is thrown out, intended for Bergman, and almost picked off. Bergman got one hand on it, and Memphis almost picked it off, but they'll get the ball back, and it's excitement time again because Jeff Brockhorst is going to have to punt. Good job of the defense back there. As Mafus getting pressure, 92, Reggie White jumped in his face, made him throw it a little bit bad. Coming in is Carlton Peoples. Reggie White in the battle with Nate Hudson, number 63, just takes it inside, but really is the guy that caused Mafus bad vision and was unable to really get the timing to Bergman that he'd like to have gotten. Remember, Jeff Brockhouse had one terrible punt of only maybe 20-some yards, and then the second time, the snap went over his head. Here is his third punt. Needed one there and gets a pretty good-looking punt. Dameron has the ball, goes off his foot. Brockhurst was 30 yards away and said, we got the ball. But it belongs to Memphis at the 30-yard line. Dameron almost and kicked that ball recovered. right back toward the on-charging Jacksonville ball. 5.37 to go. It's still up for grabs. Tied at 24 all here in Memphis. Memphis with 5.37 to go, looking for their second win. Whereas Jacksonville is looking to even the record at three all. Showboats have the ball at their own 30. First and 10, the wind is in their faces. Walter Lewis, Allen Lewis keeps the ball after faking to Reed. And Lewis, look out, he is inside the 45. Oh, he's knocked down inside the 30 as the flag goes down. At the end of the play, Walter Lewis, first down, and the flag goes down. Well, he certainly caught the defense totally unaware. Sweep action, bootleg all the way, drops it to the hip, gets out around the outside of the linebacker. That's Fernando Jackson, 53, who got fooled. Good move right there by Lewis. You'll see a clip come in right from the side over there. Bang. You just see it coming into the picture as Lewis goes down. So they'll they'll back it up 15 more than likely from that point, but it'll be enough for a first down. A legal block. Preliminary call. Reproduce the hands against the children. That's an illegal block, and they'll do it from the spot of the foul naturally. The first down had already been accomplished. Walter Lewis, when he has run tonight, has been absolutely outstanding. Came in with better than a seven-yard average. He's done much better than that tonight. First down at the 42. Illegal use the hand. Block above the waist from the rear on the offense. First down. The officials being a little bit kind there, Jim, because I watched it all the way. It was a true clip at that stage. But Walter Lewis did turn on the afterburners. Carney comes to the left. Crawford goes to the right. First down from the 42. And now Reed gets inside the 40-yard line. A pickup of three. Goes down at the 39. Hendel made the stop. It's second and seven. As the clock goes below the five-minute mark in this tie ball game. Good play by Hendel to fill that. That's the second time they ran it. The first time in the, in the first half, they picked up second eight yards seven. with it. An isolation move where Kuhn moved to the left side. The fullback picked off the nose tackle. And Reed came in there clean. But read well by Hendel to shut it down. Earlier today, Chicago won its first 21-20 over Washington. And now Memphis is trying to win its second. Long way to go. Quarles with the ball. Gets down to the 35-yard line. Again, handle the man up top. And it's going to be third down and three to go from a 35. They tried to run a long trap from right to left. As Mike Horton, the guard, was pulling that way, Fernando Jackson penetrated and forced the play inside. And remember, Don, if they do not make it, 
If they're entertaining any ideas of a field goal, that wind would be in Alan Duncan's face blowing hard. Yes, and as evidenced by that last kickoff that was very short, it would be very, very difficult. Two tight ends, ball at the 35, three yards to go for the first down on third. And they're not going to get it. Alan Reed gets back to the 35, and that is all. Dinkle led the way. And it's fourth down, and Pepper Rogers on the sidelines apparently is going to go for the first down because Duncan is still. Nope, here comes Duncan on the field. Duncan went back and then now comes out on the. Nope, they're bringing out Partridge on the field. They're going to punt the ball away. I think that Pepper realized, maybe the fans do not, that the ball would be a 52 yard attempt into the wind, and that's just illogical. What they really wanted was for him to go, but should he not make it, outstanding field position for Jacksonville going with the win. Partridge would try to dump this inside the 20 if he can. But he's got too good a kick there. Goes into the end zone and will come out to the 20. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go. Ma Boos and company have 80 yards to go. Well, all the fans that are booing, and there are a lot of them, They've been an enthusiastic crowd here this evening. Great, great sports fans here in Memphis, but they wanted uh, Pepper to go for it. Pepper said, yeah, but I'm coaching the football team. It's, it's my, my job. job. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> I knew you did. Well, great minds think alike. Yeah. <laughs> From the 20, Clark and Matthews both go wide left. Let's see how Mafus plays it down there. You don't want to make a mistake down there. Whiting comes out to the right. Well, he's been throwing on nearly every play and is going to do it again. Oh, they were in his face, and Whiting makes the catch at the 29-yard line. But people's all over him. Mafus tonight has gotten the ball away done. You have to appreciate it more than nearly anybody else. The pressure he's been getting and the big plays he's come up with with people all over him. Really, all evening long he's done that. You know another dimension that Infante gives his team? You take Whiting, who's a back. He puts him out there in a the double wing. they got to be kind of utility guys. They've got to be able to run out of the backfield, yet run pass routes like a wide receiver. Second down, a yard to go. Mason's got the first down. Getting out to the 33. We're getting very close to the two-minute mark. And for those of you who follow the USFL, you know once you get inside the two-minute mark, they stop the clock on first downs while they move the sticks. They don't have to use all of your timeouts. The Bulls have all three of theirs left. The Showboats have two. First down from the 33-yard line. Maybe they won't get this away. Maybe they will just before the two-minute mark. They get it away. Now they say they didn't. Now they say, nope, you waited too long. The clock shows 1.59 to go. They did not get a play away. Plus two minute warning. 24 all. We're live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Jacksonville has got the ball, and they're 67 yards away from trying to win this ball game. That says it all. You can see the timeouts, the score, and the time remaining. And remember, Jacksonville with the football on first and ten, not using Willie McLennan, went off just before the first half ended with an air cast around his leg. We heard it was a knee. We are checking with the press box to find out if there's any further information about the fine running back who can also catch the ball, number 21, Willie McLendon. In the meantime, the Bulls have had to go without him in this half, hoping that they don't have to go with him without him in games to come. It would be a big loss. Clark left, Matthews right, first 10-10 from the 33. Mafu going downfield long for Clark. No flag. Good job of defending on the ball down there. Carlton Peoples. Brian Howard on the coverage. Check that Brian Howard on the coverage. Clark coming downfield. Extremely good speed. 4-4, but it shows you what Clark can do is he's right with them. The ball led a little bit to the inside. They had three receivers set to the right. 
in what is referred to as a trip set overloading the right side trying to lull him a little bit but Howard was not to let it happen second down and ten Kemp the third wide receiver is in he's had a big catch tonight Hapus throws the ball on one hop to Bergman it is third down and ten big play there by Brian Clark Big Reggie White. Alvin Clark, Reggie White, both in. It is third down and ten. Here's White 92 working on Hudson the tackle again. A power rush to the inside as he gets to Mafu's, forcing him to throw the ball a little early, and he said, Ha, I'll let you know. I had a couple sacks last week and I'm in your face. Well, I think he did a pretty good job of working on Hudson. Yes. White he, blew him aside, he, he, didn't did. he? he ran right through him. A rookie out of Tennessee. Third down. Bafus gets the ball away. Out of bounds. Do they say yes or no? They say yes, but it is not enough for the first down. Henderson caught the ball on the sidelines. But they'll have to kick it away. And Jeff Brockhaus, with the win at his back, is coming on for his fourth time tonight. He's got to be a little nervous back there, too, Jim. He's had a couple of poor kicks, and then, of course, that high snap that eventually led to a touchdown. And he's getting a big opportunity to see what he can do, and they need a big punt out of him at this stage, and yet he's got to be ready to field a, a potential bad, bad snap back there. 123 left in this tie game. Overtime is a possibility. The game was won this afternoon in overtime. That was Oklahoma over Houston. Ball was almost blocked. Dameron did not call for a fair catch. He's across the 30 and out to the 35. And now with 113 to go, Walter Lewis and company will try to get things going. And if they do not, we're headed for overtime. Home crowd of better than 26,000 on a cold, cold night in Memphis seeing an excellent ball game. You know, Walter Lewis has been most effective when he has gotten to the outside. He gets a better field of vision, and he also has that option of running the football, which he does so effectively. I would expect that Pepper's going to get him sliding from side to side. First down, three wide receiver. That is Reed to his flank wide, going in motion. Walter Lewis. Oh, does he have time? What are you going to do, Walter? Now I see somebody and coming back for across the way. It's number 83, Cormac Carney. Pepper Rogers wants time. He's got a first down, but Pepper, they stop the clock while they move the sticks. They don't need to call time. And they're quickly going to back the line back to the line of scrimmage. And Walter Lewis is yelling to his outside people. Now from the 49-yard line, clock starts again. We're below the one-minute mark. Lewis gets the ball out here, and this is Alan Reed trying to get around one man. Steps away, and is thrown out of bounds, stopping the clock inside the 45. 48 seconds to go. 48 seconds to score, or we go to overtime. And by the way, we've just heard word that Willie McClendon will undergo arthroscopic surgery in the coming week. So he will be out for a little while. Walter Lewis went quickly to the sideline and checked with Pepper Rogers before this play got started so he could get back to the huddle and see what he wanted. Second down, a couple of yards from the 43. Lewis. Stepping around. Now drills the ball. He's got so much time. He's got to have people like Carney open. Lewis just stands there. And now the pressure shifts to Alan Duncan with 35 seconds to go as they move within his field goal range. Excellent job by Walter Lewis standing in there that time. He could have eaten a sandwich back there. But they have not been getting any pressure on him. That's one thing that Lindy, Lindy Infante had said. He cons went conservative with the defense as Lewis drops back, stands back. He avoids one man, but now watch him set up and look around. He was looking to run initially, but he spots his receiver down the middle, and that is what Pepper Rogers says. He is so intelligent back there, has such great poise, and Infante, on the other hand, said that 
his defenses were a little too complicated. He backed them off last week, and they played better against the Express. Right now, it's hurting them. No pressure. That's Alan Duncan, who may be called on to win this. There is but one timeout left for the showboats of Memphis. The ball is at the 25. If it just stays where it is, Smith would have to try to kick a 42-yard field goal into the wind to win it. So Walter Lewis and company want to move the ball down closer. But when they get closer, if they don't get a first down, they'd have to call timeout for the final time to stop the clock and to get Duncan on the field. Well, they've averaged just 15 points a game coming in. Tonight, they've got uh, 24 points for these Memphis Showboat players. But you know, Jim, the interesting thing here with 35 seconds left, they got a chance to get off at least three pass plays, but they're going to have to either go to the end zone or to the sidelines if they want to preserve that one timeout. I'm just wondering, Don, also, and I'm not a defensive coach or anything like it, why they don't try a blitz on some occasion to Lewis because he's just been standing there and picking his spots. They're not showing blitz now. Number 25, Walter Lewis. He's got room to the right. He's inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. They better call timeout here. 25 seconds to go. They're not going to do it. They're going to try to get a hurry up. 20 seconds to go on the clock. That was a blown handoff. He didn't get the handoff to him. He had to run it himself, and it's going to cost him. Now a Jacksonville man is down. That is Val Brown, and that stops the clock for Memphis. Oh, what a break. A Jacksonville got. man is hurt. Val Brown, and that stops the clock for Memphis. Walter Lewis gets a chance to come over with 19 seconds to go. The ball is at the 16-yard line. It would be about a 32-yard field goal should Duncan be called on to try to win the game in the closing seconds. Well, Walter Lewis very alertly on that missed exchange turned around and quickly went upfield so he got some big yardage to get in a little closer for the field goal attempt but the thing that happened in their favor was that one of the Jacksonville Bulls Val Brown was injured on it so they did not have to utilize that timeout with 19 seconds left they still could get off possibly two plays if they wanted to gamble a little bit but certainly one, and more than likely, they're going to try and go to the end zone to get six points out of it. We look forward to New Orleans of Birmingham Monday night here on ESPN, but it can't be more exciting than this one, I don't think. 19 seconds left. Walter Lewis on a draw play, just trying to get it down the middle. It does inside the 15. They'll call time here, and that just might bring Duncan on, but if he gets the first down, the they don't need the timeout. They have not yet officially called a timeout. There may be time for measurement. They may call it first down, which would stop the clock. In any event, Alan Duncan is coming on the field. Well, you'd almost have to say that was a little bit of trickery, or Pepper Rogers chose to play it a little bit conservative as he went with the quarterback draw, and that time there was absolutely no daylight there. It did eat up the time, and he was in the back of his mind saying, well, our option is we'll be relatively close for the field goal and our field goal kicker should make this although they are now measuring for the first down and it is a first down Duncan first has down. hit on a 37 yard field goal already this will be a 32 yard attempt the strong wind is not as strong as it has been a plus for Alan Duncan with 10 seconds to go he will try to get them up top 27 24 32 yards out, Duncan's kick is good! One second remains. I'll tell you, the happiest guy in the field, Alan Duncan sprung high in the air. He knew it was good. He said, baby, take it home. One second remains on the clock. Now they say there's no time left on the clock. The second goes off. The fireworks go off. Duncan has won it. Memphis is two and four. And Jacksonville is also two and four. 
A reminder, on Monday night at 8 o'clock, undefeated New Orleans at Birmingham. But this has been a great one tonight for Don Heinrich. I'm Jim Simpson. Our congratulations to Memphis and Alan Duncan, who kicked the 32-yard winning field goal. On this chilly night, everything came up roses for Memphis. The showboats show their boat and win 27-24.